Chapter 17 Augustus Gloop Goes Up the Pipe When Mr. Wonka turned round and saw what Augustus Gloop was doing, he cried out, Oh, no, please, Augustus, please, I beg of you not to do that. My chocolate must be untouched by human hands. Augustus called out Mrs. Gloop. Didn't you hear what the man said? Come away from that river at once. This stuff is terrific, said Augustus, not taking not the slightest notice of his mother or Mr. Wonka. Oh, boy, I need a bucket to drink it properly. Augustus, cried Mr. Wonka, hopping up and down and waggling his stick in the air. You must come away. You are dirtying my chocolate. Augustus, cried Mrs. Gloop. Augustus, cried Mr. Gloop. But Augustus was deaf to everything except the call of his enormous stomach. He was now lying full length on the ground with his head far out over the river, lapping up the chocolate like a dog. Augustus, shouted Mrs. Gloop. You'll be giving that nasty cold of yours to about a million people all over the country. Be careful, Augustus, shouted Mr. Gloop. You're leaning too far out. Mr. Gloop was absolutely right, for suddenly there was a shriek, and then a splash, and into the river went Augustus Gloop, and in one second he had disappeared under the brown surface. Save him, screamed Mrs. Gloop, going white in the face and waving her umbrella about. He'll drown. He can't swim a yard. Save him, save him. Good heavens, woman, said Mr. Gloop. I'm not diving in there. I've got my best suit on. Augustus Gloop's face came up again to the surface, painted brown with chocolate. Help, 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 he yelled. Fish me out. Don't just stand there, Mrs. Gloop screamed at Mr. Gloop. Do something. I am doing something, said Mr. Gloop, who was now taking off his jacket and getting ready to dive into the chocolate. But while he was doing this, the wretched boy was being sucked closer and closer toward the mouth of one of the great pipes that was dangling down into the river. Then... All at once, the powerful suction took hold of him completely, and he was pulled under the surface and then into the mouth of the pipe. The crowd on the river bank waited breathlessly to see where he would come out. There he goes, somebody shouted, pointing upwards. And sure enough, because the pipe was made of glass, Augustus Gloop could be clearly seen shooting up inside it, head first like a torpedo. Help! Murder! Police! screamed Mrs. Gloop. Augustus, come back at once! Where are you going? It's a wonder to me, said Mr. Gloop, how that pipe is big enough for him to go through it. It isn't big enough, said Charlie Bucket. Oh dear, look, he's slowing down. So he is, said Grandpa Joe. He's going to stick, said Charlie. I think he is, said Grandpa Joe. By golly, he has stuck, said Charlie. It's his stomach that's done it, said Mr. Gloop. He's blocked the whole pipe, said Grandpa Joe. Smash the pipe, yelled Mrs. Gloop, still waving her umbrella. Augustus, come out of there at once! The watchers below could see the chocolate swishing around the boy in the pipe, and they could see it building up behind him in a solid mass, pushing against the blockage. The pressure was terrific. Something had to give. Something did give, and that something was Augustus. Woof! Up he shot again like a bullet in the barrel of a gun. He's disappeared, yelled Mrs. Gloop. Where does that pipe go? Quick, call the fire brigade. Keep calm, cried Mr. Wonka. Keep calm, my dear lady, keep calm. There is no danger, no danger whatsoever. Augustus has gone on a little journey, that's all. A most interesting little journey, but he'll come out of it just fine. You wait and see. How can he possibly come out just fine? 
snapped Mrs. Gloop. He'll be made into marshmallows in five seconds. Impossible, cried Mr. Wonka. Unthinkable, inconceivable, absurd. He could never be made into marshmallows. And why not, may I ask, shouted Mrs. Gloop. Because that pipe doesn't go to the marshmallow room, Mr. Wonka answered. It doesn't go anywhere near it. That pipe, the one Augustus went up, happens to lead directly to the room where I make a most delicious kind of strawberry-flavored chocolate-coated fudge. Then he'll be made into strawberry-flavored chocolate-coated fudge, screamed Mrs. Gloop. My poor Augustus, they'll be selling him by the pound all over the country tomorrow morning. Quite right, said Mr. Gloop. I know I'm right, said Mrs. Gloop. It's beyond a joke, said Mr. Gloop. Mr. Wonka doesn't seem to think so, cried Mrs. Gloop. Just look at him. He's laughing his head off. How dare you laugh like that when my boy's just gone up the pipe, you monster? She shrieked, pointing her umbrella at Mr. Wonka as though she were going to run him through. You think it's a joke, don't you? You think that sucking my boy up into your fudge room like that is just one big colossal joke? He'll be perfectly safe, said Mr. Wonka, giggling slightly. He'll be chocolate fudge, shrieked Mrs. Gloop. Never, cried Mr. Wonka. Of course he will, shrieked Mrs. Gloop. I wouldn't allow it, cried Mr. Wonka. And why not, shrieked Mrs. Gloop. Because the taste would be terrible, said Mr. Wonka. Just imagine it, Augustus-flavored chocolate-coated gloop. No one would buy it. They most certainly would, cried Mr. Gloop indignantly. I don't want to think about it, shrieked Mrs. Gloop. Nor do I, said Mr. Wonka. And I do promise you, madame, that your darling boy is perfectly safe. If he's perfectly safe, then where is he? snapped Mrs. Gloop. Lead me to him this instant. Mr. Wonka turned around and clicked his finger sharply. Click, 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 three times. Immediately, an Oompa Loompa appeared, as if from nowhere, and stood beside him. The Oompa Loompa bowed and smiled, showing beautiful white teeth. His skin was rosy white, his long hair was golden brown, and the top of his head came just above the height of Mr. Wonka's knee. He wore the usual deerskin slung over his shoulder. Now listen to me, said Mr. Wonka, looking down at the tiny man. I want you to take Mr. and Mrs. Gloop up to the fudge room and help them find their son, Augustus. He's just gone up the pipe. The Oompa Loompa took one look at Mrs. Gloop and exploded into peals of laughter. Oh, do be quiet, said Mr. Wonka. Control yourself. Pull yourself together. Mrs. Gloop doesn't think it's at all funny. You can say that again, said Mrs. Gloop. Go straight to the fudge room, said Mr. Wonka to the Oompa Loompa. And when you get there, take a long stick and start poking around inside the big chocolate mixing barrel. I'm almost certain you'll find him in there. But you'd better look sharp. You'll have to hurry. If you leave him in the chocolate mixing barrel too long, he's liable to get poured out into the fudge boiler. And that really would be a disaster, wouldn't it? My fudge would become quite uneatable. Mr. Gloop let out a shriek of fury. I'm joking, said Mr. Wonka, giggling madly behind his beard. I didn't mean it. Forgive me, I'm so sorry. Goodbye, Mrs. Gloop and Mr. Gloop. Goodbye, goodbye, I'll see you later. As Mr. and Mrs. Gloop and their tiny escort hurried away, the five Oompa Loompas on the far side of the river suddenly began hopping and dancing about and beating wildly upon a number of very small drums. Augustus Gloop, they chanted. 
Augustus Gloop, Augustus Gloop, Augustus Gloop. Grandpa, cried Charlie. Listen to them, Grandpa. What are they doing? Shh, whispered Grandpa Joe. I think they're going to sing us a song. Augustus Gloop, chanted the Oompa Loompas. Augustus Gloop, Augustus Gloop. The great big greedy nincompoop. How long could we allow this beast to gorge and guzzle, feed and feast on everything he wanted to? Great Scott, it simply wouldn't do. However long this pig might live, we're positive he'd never give even the smallest bit of fun or happiness to anyone. So what we do in cases such as this we use the gentle touch and carefully we take the brat and turn him into something that will give great pleasure to us all, a doll, for instance, or a ball, or marbles, or a rocking horse. But this revolting boy, of course, was so unutterably vile, so greedy, foul, and infantile, he left a most disgusting taste inside our mouths, and so in haste. We chose a thing come what may, would take the nasty taste away. Come on, we cried, the time is ripe, to send him shooting up the pipe. He has to go, it has to be, and very soon he's going to see. Inside the room to which he's gone, some funny things are going on. But don't, dear children, be alarmed. Augustus Gloop will not be harmed. Although, of course, we must admit, he will be altered quite a bit. He will be, he'll be quite changed from what he's been when he goes through the fudge machine. Slowly the wheels go round and round. The cogs begin to grind and pound. A hundred knives to slice, slice, slice. We add some sugar, cream, and spice. We boil him for a minute more until we're absolutely sure that all the greed and all the gall is boiled away once and for all. Then out he comes, and now, by grace, a miracle has taken place. This boy, who only just before was loathed by men from shore to shore, this greedy brute, this louse's ear, is loved by people everywhere. For who could hate or bear a grudge against a luscious bit of fudge? I told you they loved singing, cried Mr. Wonka. Aren't they delightful? Aren't they charming? But you mustn't believe a word they said. It's all nonsense, every bit of it. Are the Oompa Loompas really joking, Grandpa? asked Charlie. Of course they're joking, answered Grandpa Joe. They must be joking. At least I hope they're joking. Don't you? 